Good morning, and welcome to South Park Christian Church. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers and fathers and single people. Welcome to people of all, of all colors, cultures, abilities, gender and relational identities, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to question believers. Welcome to those who are here this morning or those who are watching this from around the corner or from across the globe. This morning we are all invited to live in God's peace, love, and justice. About a week ago I had a meeting with the executive committee and it was asked if I would move the announcements from the end of the service to the beginning of the service to, uh, so as not to interrupt the flow of worship. So we're giving that a try for a little bit. So uh, right now we're going to, uh, the, these are the announcements. Um, the first one I wanted to point out is, uh, see that little white tower over there on the ledge uh, behind the piano, the little light that goes on and off? There's also one in the kitchen, and then there's one in the office. Carol got those from um, uh, Costco, and she came in this week. They are Wi-Fi extenders so that we can hopefully have Wi-Fi here in the sanctuary. So while I probably won't uh, ask of this of you very often, if, you could, if you've got your phones with you and you want to try and log on to the internet here during the service just to test to see what your strength is, as well as if there's several people on, that would give us a good indication of how strong the internet connection is here. Next week, we'll try and live stream the service instead of recording. And I'm not quite sure how to do that. I'm going to leave that up to our pro Gigi out there. But perhaps next week we can live stream the service. We're doing this as a way to uh, be able to reach more people, live stream the services, and also we have been asked to be a place where we will have our regional assembly, the location for our regional assembly next year in April for the uh, Christian Church of Disciples of Christ in North Carolina. And um, for us to be able to do that, we have to be able to live stream the meetings for the people who will not be able to make it in person to that meeting. So thank you, Carol, for uh, picking those up. They were on sale. Uh, trying to get everything wired, which, you know, if this doesn't work, we may have to go back and revisit, but trying to get everything wired can cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, close to 10000 This cost the church $400? Plus tax. Plus, plus tax. Oh, plus tax. Let's go forget the tax. Yeah, so, so quite a savings on there. And if this was a good way for us to be able to get the same, achieve the same goals, then hey, it's, it's $400 very well spent. So thank you, Carol, for bringing that in. She and I together figured out how to get this up and going. So hopefully it works. Uh, my next announcement is, uh, I think Carol may need to come do this. Nominating committee, do you need to announce the nominating committee as the vice chair? I guess so, because Renee is in here. Yeah, Renee is out of town this weekend. So uh, I saw the email from, uh, I think Bonnie sent you an email about this. Do you know who the nominating committee is? Yeah. I do. Good. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> let me transform. I am Carol Howitt, the vice chair of the <laughs> Our nominating committee this year is Bonnie Williams, Ed Gagnon, Kevin Baker Rice, Ann Fields, and Jen Sullivan. So the coming weeks, you may receive a call from one or more of these people on the nominating committee asking you to serve in some capacity in our congregation. Please prayerfully consider the request and um, respond accordingly. I'm now going to transform back. October 29th to the 31st is our annual Christ Mail Retreat. So um, there's a sign-up sheet back in the art Narthex. If you are wanting to come join us for that, please do so. Please sign up. Um, if you have any questions about the retreat or if you are in a financial bind and would like to go but can't necessarily afford it, please contact Alicia. Alicia has some information on financial assistance. 
I am not very well informed about what that is, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But if you are needing some financial assistance, call, contact Alicia, and she is happy to uh, let you know about that. Um, we do have a low turnout today. I know several people who are out, several families who are out of town. Um, and then I think, is there a Panthers game today? No? Oh, okay. Other people are just playing for So our midweek pastors check-in is every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. I will send out a Zoom link for Thursday afternoons. The Disciples Sunday School class are meeting on Tuesday evenings at 7 on Zoom, and the Seekers are meeting on Sunday mornings at 9.15. Um, the the a Zoom link meeting ID passcode that you get for every other meeting here is the same one. So save that onto your computer, and anytime there's a church meeting, you can use that link, and that's the one that will do most of our meetings unless otherwise uh, specified. Please continue to check our website for updates. Uh, Christy is now working from home as of this week. And um, so if you need anything from Christy, it's best to email her at office.southparkchristian at gmail.com. Um, she is very good at responding, usually within 24 hours, depending on what her work schedule is for that day with her other job. Um, but yeah, please, please contact Christy. She's keeping um, the website up to date as well. Are there any other announcements? Our call to worship this morning comes to us from Psalm 20, verses 1 to 5. Hear now these words. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May the Lord send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May the Lord remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Selah. May the Lord grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May you shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Please rise as you are able and let us join in singing our morning hymn, number 227, In the Garden, verses 1 and from our own homes. 
We are thankful, O oh God, that no matter where we are, you are present with us. God, you promised Jacob so long ago that you would never leave him, that he, you would always remain with him. That promise has remained with all of humanity since that time. You came to earth in the person of Jesus to remind us that you love and, and care for each one of us in small ways and in big ways. And you came to remind us that you would never leave us. So God, even in times when we struggle, even in times when we don't know which way to turn, or we feel so alone, we can trust that you are there with us. God, we are thankful that you've given us this day. We are thankful for the sun that is shining, for the birds that we hear chirping. We are thankful for the change of seasons, God. Where maybe where the weather is a little cooler in the morning, the air a little bit more brisk, but we can still feel the warmth of the sun on our skin and are reminded of your majesty, of your creative powers, and of your presence on this earth. God, the world is divided. The world is in chaos in many ways. And we turn to you to seek to you answers and guidance. God, you are the God of wisdom and you are the God of justice. Help us, O oh Lord, to seek your will. Help us, O oh Lord, to live ever more fully into your desire for us and into your will. Reveal to us, O oh God, your will so that we don't try to uh, pass our will off as yours, but that we are truly seeking to live according to the way that you would want us to live. To love one another. To live in truth, integrity, and authenticity. God, forgive us when we do not meet those expectations. Forgive us when we fail to love one another. And God, we are also thankful that your forgiveness is always ready that you are always there to help us try and start again. All this we pray, O oh God, knowing that you are with us forever, knowing that you are our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And so in that spirit, O oh God, we come before you, and we give you thanks for the joys of new life, new relationships, new jobs, new opportunities, new beginnings, the many blessings in our life for which we are thankful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God, grief is a very real part of our life. And so for those who are grieving the death of their loved ones, for those who are acknowledging the anniversaries of those death, of those deaths, we pray for your peace and for your comfort for all who mourn. Lord, in your prayers. God, for those who are struggling with loneliness, especially those around the world who are still affected and continue to be affected by COVID-19, for those who are separated from families, for family dynamics that may result in estrangement, for those who, due to some sort of mental illness, are living alone, we pray, O oh God, that you would remind each of these people of your eternal presence in their life. Send ones into them, into their lives, that they may be reminded that they are not alone on this earth. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are ill, undergoing tests and treatment, and discerning next steps in their treatment for wisdom, for guidance, for answers, for calmness, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are caring for loved ones, our first responders, our doctors, and nurses, medical teams, family members, all those who are 
working every day to care for those who are ill, caring for their loved ones, caring for patients. We pray for strength. We pray for perseverance. We pray for wisdom. And we pray for protection. Lord, in your for those who are preparing for or recovering from surgery, injuries, and procedures, we pray for your divine healing upon their bodies. We thank you, O oh God, that medical science has provided so many ways to heal our bodies from the ailments, injuries, and illnesses that we live with every day. And so, God, we pray for comfort, we pray for restoration, and we pray for healing. Lord, in your mercy. God, for those in positions of power, our world leaders, our local leaders, anyone who has authority, we pray for wisdom, for peace, that they would think of others, that there would be a sense of respectability and a sense of integrity in their leadership. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray that for each of these people today, those mentioned and those who are on, on our hearts and unmentioned, we ask that you would grant them your strength and wisdom and fill them with your healing presence. God, we pray that in these days you would ignite in our hearts a desire for a revival. A revival to do what is right and a revival of your love for all people. Grant us, O oh God, the wisdom to build bridges and the courage to cross those bridges. To take the hand of those who may be different from us. To walk in faith with those who may challenge us and most especially, to see in each other the heart of Christ on earth today. All this we pray through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 to 22. Hear now these words. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, Jacob put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside Jacob and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I do not know him. And Jacob was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillow and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Lutz at the time. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give one tenth to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. that is an old-timey hymn, and I'm sorry that Henry's not here because he's always asking me to pull out some of these old gospel hymns and, and do it, but we thought it'd be fun to, to do our version of this, and I grew up with it in my little Methodist church that I grew up in, so I bet a lot of you had the same piece in your hymnal back when you were younger as well. It's called Bringing in the Sheaves, 
And at the end of the service, actually, we're going to do a survey. And any of you that actually know what bringing in or what a sheave is, we're going to give extra points. So be thinking about that. Dreams. 
And I'll be honest, that has always fascinated me. It's always fascinated me the people who can interpret our dreams, or at least profess to be able to interpret our dreams and what they mean. This morning's scripture is one such thing. We see throughout the scripture certain people having dreams. We see it from Gen Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. In fact, the entire book of Revelation is a dream Joel had. And uh, since, that, uh, since the book of Revelation was written, theologians and everybody has been trying to interpret that dream ever since. And there have been entire theologies on that interpretation. There are entire denominations that have been founded based on someone's interpretation of the book of Revelation. And we have to remember that dreams, especially in the Bible, are not necessarily literal. They're very figurative. And that's why it allows for so much different interpretation that goes on. So this is a dream that Jacob had. He, he fell asleep in this land and dreamt that there was a ladder reaching to heaven. And on that ladder, angels were ascending and descending. And then God says, I will not leave you. Your offspring will be blessed. You will spread out to the north, south, east, and west. But you will come back, and I will give you this land. And I will never leave you until the work is done. And so it's interesting for us to read this dream and think of what that might necessarily mean. Now, I'm going to tell you what my interpretation of this is, my understanding of this dream, okay? I am not saying this is the, this is the interpretation. I don't want to sound like that, but it seems to make sense to me. Now, we know that there's not a literal ladder that reaches from Earth to heaven, right? Those of us who have traveled around the world, been to different countries, We've never seen that ladder, right? It's not been on a PBS special, the ladder reaching to heaven. You know, I love watching the shows on, on travel, Rick Steve's Europe, and, and yesterday I was watching a couple episodes of The Secrets of Egypt and The Secrets of the Pyramid, but I've yet to find a show that says The Secret of the Ladder to Heaven. So there is no ladder to heaven, and there is no angels ascending and descending on but I think what it is saying is that God is in communication with us, right? That's what dreams are. It's some sort of communication. And it may be fantastical, it may be very realistic, but our dreams are something about a communication in our brain. And that communication may be with God, that communication may be another form of communication with something or someone else. I think that's what this dream is about. It's, it's about God's communication from Jacob to, to God. And it's about God's communication between us and God. And about the way that God is present in our lives. The angels ascending and descending may be just those, those thoughts. It may, there may be angels out there. I don't know. I'm not necessarily one to say, yes, I believe in angels in a literal sense, but I know good and faithful people who do. I've not seen one, so I don't know. But it could be that it's just a way of the communication between heaven and earth, and that God is always here with us, and that God is always present in our lives. We don't see God in a material form, but we can feel God's presence. We don't see God walking the earth amongst us today, but this could be a way that God reminded Jacob, I am there with you. No matter what step you take, no matter where you go on this planet, I will always be with you. I will not. I personally, in my own personal theology, believe that God came to earth in the person of Jesus, that somehow, in whatever way it happened, Jesus is the manifestation of the God that we worship. And so God came to earth to live among us, to show us how to be in relationship with one another, to make it real for us. And in that upper room, that last night before he was crucified, where he took the bread and the cup, 
and broke it and offered it to his disciples. It was Jesus reminding us that God will forever be with us. That bread and cup that we break and that we partake of is a tangible reminder of God's presence in our life. The stream that Jacob had can seem so fantastic. If we read the Bible and we read about these dreams, we can sit and say, well, that didn't really happen. So what, why is that there? And yet it's there to remind us that God desires to have a relationship with each of us. That God is in communication with each of us. That God loves us so profoundly that God will never leave us or forsake us as long as we are walking this earth. I also thought about what does that mean for us here at South Park Mission Church? For the better part of the last year and a half, we have not been able to worship in person in this sanctuary because of COVID. It can be a very lonely time. It can be a very separating time. But we are starting to come back into each other's presence. We are starting to resume our in-person worship since June. We are beginning to see more and more people coming back into the building during the week as well. We are looking to the future. What does this mean after 18 months of being kind of isolated from one another, of the building being kind of locked up for the most part for the last year and a half as we unlock our doors, as we invite people back in? What does our future look like? There's anxiety, there's stress, there's questions about what our ministry looks like for the next 5, 10, 15, whatever years, the future, what is the future of South Park Christian? My friends, I've said this many, many times, and I will say it again. I truly believe that the work that God has started in us in 1969 is not finished. That God, who began a good work in us, is going to remain faithful to us now and forever. We just have to look to the future. We just have to see what it is. It may look different. It may look very, very different to us in the future. But that doesn't mean that the work that God has is calling us to is any less important or that it's somehow an end of the old ministry. Now, each time, each season of our ministry branches into the next it's scary and, it, and it's exciting all at the same time. But God will not leave us. We turn to God. We ask for God's guidance. We ask for God's wisdom as we look to the future. And yes, it can be filled with senses of fear and anxiety for the unknown that is perfectly natural and normal. But it's, let us take the promise that God made to Jacob thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago on that ground in what, was, what Jacob named Bethel. And let's apply that promise to us now because that promise was made for all of humanity now and forever then. And it was reminded to us but through the person of Jesus, through the incarnation of God on earth in Jesus and it remains with us today. So my friends, as we regather, as we look to the future, as we figure out what the future of South Park Christian Church is, as, as what we do in the community here, where we are, what we do, how we minister, let us remember that it is the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, whom we serve. And that very God who promised Jacob those years ago that God would never leave him, until the work of God is done, makes, has that promise for us today. So we look to the future. We look to it with excitement and with some fear and trepidation. But we look to it with faith, knowing that God is with us and always will be with us. Amen.
Friends, as we prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion each week, we take a few moments and we go before God in prayer, confessing our sins to God. Scripture teaches us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But Scripture also teaches us that if we confess our sins to God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins. I invite you now into a time of silent confession. God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by the things we have said and done, and by the things we have left unsaid and undone. Forgive us, God, and create in us a clean heart, and renew our spirits, so that we may become instruments of your peace, of your love, and of your justice. Our sins we confess to you, and with a humble heart ask that you forgive us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And now, hear these words of assurance. There is nothing, nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Neither life, nor death, nor powers, nor authorities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else. For God's love for us is unconditional, and we are a forgiven people. God promised Jacob that he would not leave him or forsake him in a dream. This bread and cup that Jesus offered to his disciples in the upper room is a tangible reminder to us today that the promise of God, that the promise God made to Jacob in that dream may remain just as true for us today. All of us are invited to come and partake of the promise of God now and forever. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, as we prepare to receive this bread and cup, we recognize that you came to earth in the person of Jesus to continue the promise you made to Jacob so long ago, that you would never leave us or forsake us. We know that this bread and cup is a reminder to us that this promise lives on now and forever. Friends, as the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and here at South Park Christian Church, we practice an open communion, which means all are welcome, whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you've been baptized or not. For this is Christ's table, and you are welcome here. And together, we remember that it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. For this is my body, which has been broken for you. Likewise, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which has been poured out for you and for all people. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. As we've been doing communion the last several weeks, we'll have a, um, a, a deacons come down and usher each row out to come down to take communion, to keep physical distancing from one another. Come forward, you can take a cup out of the tray, take, uh, take it back to your seat. And when all are served, we will partake of communion together. are ready.
the bread of life and the cup of hope given for each and every one of us. You are invited to partake. And now please rise as you are able and let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught. So please share Christ's peace via text, email, phone calls, mailing women, a handwritten notes, in addition to greeting one another here in person. Ecclesiastes 3 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Friends, we are still in a season when it is time to refrain from embracing and to respect each other's space as much as possible. So please be creative in ways to greet one another that does not include physical contact, so we can help keep everyone healthy and safe. And now, receive this blessing. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands or feet on earth but yours. 
Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks compassion into the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ walks to do good. And yours are the hands through which Christ blesses the world. So go now in peace and love to serve the world in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. And may the peace of Christ 